just kick us off with your thoughts on the subsequent suspensions this week, if you could, please. Uh, we've decided to contest the um, the grading of, of Lasoni's tackle. Um, feel it's probably at the harsher end of the grading scale for a, a tackle that was deemed low force. Um, we felt, you know, in both both situations, it was, um, you know, grade D was probably on the harsher end, but uh, we also understand where the game's going and, and uh, the importance of um, not making contact with that. And will that be tonight, the appeal? Yes. Uh, what about what are your thoughts on the James Donaldson suspension? Uh, it's, it's a little early in the in the piece to be, you know, fully uh, definitive, you know, with my own thoughts. There hasn't been many of those types of tackles in, you know, we've only been going two weeks. So um, there's, there's been some challenges at the, at the panel last week, but they were, they were different types of tackles. Um, so it's, a, it's probably a little early to, to, be, to be too conclusive about, um, you know, my, my own thoughts and, and even, you know, the consistency of how, how the game itself is, is adjudicating on this stuff. It's still, we're all finding our way. You, I guess you'll you'll have a little bit more clarity later. Is it today when you meet with the? No, is it tomorrow when you meet with the the RFL, the, the coaches meeting? What what would you like that? What would you like that meeting to achieve? Uh, I'd say everyone's looking for you know clarity and, and consistency. Um, you know, personally, I want to see the the best players out on the field and available to play. You know, for for all the teams. So. The strength of our competition can be at its at its best, um, whilst still ensuring that we're we're moving towards um, you know reducing head contacts and player safety being being, being imperative. Which uh, you know I think the game's never been safer. I've said that before, but it, it continues to get safer. I think um, you know most of the the tackles that have been charged in recent times are, are very much accidents and um, sort of. There's, there's football mitigation, um, you know, amongst them. So uh, I, th- I think, you know, I'll, I look forward. I'm not, I'm not too sure what the, the content on the meeting is going to be, but, you know, I think all the, all the coaches would, would like to be able to share some insights with the, with the players that um, help them to be clear on how things are. The fact there's been, there's been a little bit of wriggle room around the head-on-head contact, would that suggest that there might be a little bit more clarity and clarification coming regarding the other head contacts. I, I'm not too sure. I haven't haven't seen or, or heard any of that uh, that stuff, even about the head on head stuff. Um, I, I know that new didn't get charged, but I, I haven't looked into any of the other stuff. So, yeah, I eagerly sort of await and, and look forward to that conversation tomorrow. And Robert and you know Robert Hicks leading the, the RFL there has, has been super um, transparent and, and open to coaches' um, thoughts and observations so you know it's very much that we're we are working together on it um you know the the good of the game has to has to be number one and player representatives will get their chance to have a conversation won't they with the the rfl have you got a sense of what the the temperature of that meeting might be oh i only saw a a forwarded text from uh, another staff member to our our player chat group uh, earlier to so I, i actually don't know anything about that meeting or what it hopes to hopes to achieve but again I think it's it you know looking from the outside on that one it it seems like a a way of players having a having a voice and being asked for their opinion and and the RFL and the players you know working together which I you know I think that could um, yeah philosophically that's a that's a step forward as well I'm not sure that they've been asked for their thoughts before because the they're not only being stood down, but they're being hit quite heavily in the pockets as well, aren't they? And can you, to that end, can you understand their discontent? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not really aware of the, the discontent other than players want to be playing, you know, they don't want to be missing games for, um, yeah, for any reason. So uh, I think, you know, my understanding with the, the fine system was it was a, you know, a, a good way of... Um, reprimanding when needed uh, but without missing a game and uh, you know I fully believe in that and if you know if it was me I'd I'd be happy to pay a fine and not miss a game um, but at, you know at times they're getting a fine and a game so I'm not I'm not quite sure how that was all brought about 
So with James Doddleson's ban and Sam Lassoni's uh, suspension pending an appeal, where does it where does it leave you in terms of middles for this weekend? Oh, well, we've got those two out, and, and Mikolai's still out. Tom Holroyd will be back in the in the picture, and uh, James McDonald's another forward that's into back into the mix as well. So um, yeah, it's sort of fortunate timing. We ideally we'd we'd love everyone available um, to to make a selection headache, but. Um, it's it's kind of good timing as well. They're coming in fresh and they've they've done a bunch of good work um, on the training field and they're they're eager to get back into it. Have you got a more exact prognosis on Mikolai's shoulder after the scan last week? No, it's it's one of those. It's not um, not as clear cut as uh, as many other injuries are. So it's sort of a week to week proposition. He's he's possible for this week, but probably. Um, more possible than probable, um, but he, you know, he could he could progress significantly in a few days, or it might take a bit more time, or it might take a bit more time than that. You know, it's sort of round three, four, five. We're not quite sure. I was lucky, Miller, after missing last week. Ah, uh, he's he's come he's coming good, and he, he's got moving again. So we'll we'll build him up again tomorrow and and see where he's at. So what do you think you'll get from Catalan on the weekend? Well, oh, they've they've been super impressive. The the first two games, um, you know, Steve Mack's done a, a tremendous job there over a long period of time at being you know at the top of the table and and being very consistent. Um, and the thing that he's been able to do is um, you know no matter who's come or, or gone from the club that they've they've maintained their their standards and their their DNA is still you know very much very prominent. Um, we've had some great clashes with. Catalans over the last couple of years. Um, last last year it was similar time of the year, a little bit later, a couple of rounds later. Um, but with the sun out, which it's forecast to do again this weekend, it it um, yeah last year was a, a cracking game, one of the better games of the season I thought. And um, you know we we hope to have a, a good open contest against them and and really challenge and test ourselves against a you know a proven successful club over the last five or six years. And just lastly, for me, on, on the field, where are the where are the um, what are the improvements that you you can see that's that's still in that that side at the moment? Oh, we got heaps of improvement in us. Um, we we're, we're a relatively new group um, with key players, but I I think we actually played played pretty solid footy last week. Um, we got beaten by a couple of deflections. The game could easily go on the other way um, on a on a swamp. You know, and this week we'll be we'll be playing on a, a proper track that doesn't give way. Um, that I think, you know, we we're able to express ourselves a bit more and, and play some some upbeat uh, upbeat rugby. So we were our D was really good last week. I thought um, just had a couple of moments there with a few deflections that sort of let us down. But we've conceded one line break in in two weeks, so we're building a, a base there on um, not 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 presenting the opposition with many opportunities. Are you, are you almost glad that the RFL has sort, of, has sort of showed that something had to be done and they are sort of taking steps to do it now with the head contact thing? I, I, I'm not too sure what yeah you know, what, what is going to change or if anything is going to change. But I, as I said earlier, I think um, it's it's great that that Robert and his um, his team there at the RFL have been um, transparent and looking for you know feedback and and uh observations so that we can you know we can make the game both safe and and the best spectacle it can be you you were fairly vocal with your comments after the whole game about almost encouraging people to basically make a meal and things like that would you sort of pass that message on to the coaches meeting with the, RF, with the rfl tomorrow as well um just to be clear sort of my comments after the game um weren't specific to those two incidents that in, in our game i was more of referring and reflecting on the, the games that I've seen where, you know, players are, aren't getting up, you know, they're, they're staying down until um, the outcome of the, the tackle is sort of resolved, where I, I think our game's always being built on if you can get up, you, you do get up. Um, the other aspect of it that, you know, players are all running in towards the contest, appealing for penalties, uh, you know, which is very similar to to any football game that you watch. Um, so you, you, if if asked for opinion, um, I'll certainly pass that on at the coaches' meeting. Just on, on, on to your lads, I mean, you, you must be delighted with the way Ash has started the season with two very memorable tries in two weeks. Yeah, Ash has had two very, um, very good 
overall wing um, winger games in the last you know the, the last two games he's obviously had those spectacular moments um, which he's, he's worked really hard on in the preseason but uh, he's he's had really good overall um, well-rounded games and le- leading the way for us has he changed anything preseason into how he approaches things and how he does things maybe he's been extremely diligent um, he's he's tr- trained hard he's made you know a lot of commitments and choices off the field um, to support He's always been a good a good pro to, to my knowledge and in my time at the club he's been a good professional but he's he's taken that up and up a standard and um, it's a good example for the rest of our group that if you if you do a bit more then you you sometimes get a bit more too so um, early days it's only round two but Ash has start, certainly started well and just one last one for me on there Mikel Guderman I mean be a big day for him with him against the, the club he left in in, in some big play for last year be, be a big day for him won't it yeah, I'd imagine so. Like a, a French kid coming to to the UK is always a big step. But he he served Catalans, you know, extremely well, and they uh, they developed him into a, a very good, solid Super League player. And he played, um, you know, ninety nine games, I think, for uh, for Catalans. So he um, he's yeah, he, he that's where he he sort of paved his way. And he's you know, there are obviously a lot of his mates there, but he's uh, he's been super committed to us from from his first day in the door and um, very much a rhino these days. Yeah, given your lower numbers in the middle, we we have to make alterations tactically in, in order to hurt Catalans and other areas of the field. Oh uh, well, I you know I don't envisage many teams go go uh, into a match with Catalans thinking that they're just going to play one out and uh, grind them away. That's they're certainly very very good at that. Um, they're they're excellent defensive team and they have been for for a long period of time. As I said earlier, regardless of people coming and going um, from their from their club, they their DNA um, continues on. So yeah, we'll be looking to to move the ball um, and to play some some good rugby. Yeah, some fans felt you're you're a middle short coming into the season. Are you happy and comfortable with your middle options? Yeah, I am very much so. Um, obviously, if you take you know three or four middle players unavailable through injury or suspension out of any club, you know they would probably say, "Hey, we're one short." So uh, when we're back all together, fully fit, um, yeah, you know, we'll be able to make a better assessment of that rather than uh, speculating. Yeah, are there any academy props like Tom Nicholson what, and that, are, that are knocking on the door? Academy props? No. Yeah. No, they're yeah. they're uh, they're only young lads. We've got some terrific ones coming through um, that are that are in their first year of academy, um, and we've got some other other kids that'll develop more as you know twenty, twenty one, twenty two year olds. But um, you know the the days of the seventeen or eighteen year old front rower playing Super League weekly, you know they're they're very few and far between those guys. Yeah. Would you envisage Tom getting an opportunity on Saturday? Um, Tom will be in the picture, which he, he has been in the last couple of weeks as well, and we'll we'll sort of just assess the best uh, makeup of our bench as the week goes. Yeah, but these these issues that you do have, they do present opportunities for other people, do you, and that can only benefit you in, in the long run this looking ahead to the rest of the season? Yeah, certainly, and, you know, it is what it is. I'm um, always excited by the players that will be playing and, and not looking too much at the ones that won't be, so... Um, we'll we'll play as a team and we'll we'll give it a, a good crack and we'll be we'll be confident of a positive result coming uh, coming on Saturday. Did um, Tom Nicholson Morton have a bit of a knock last week? Was it? He was fully fit, was it? Out of the uh, whole KR game. Yeah, he, he wasn't selected for uh, the seventeen. Right. Um, obviously, Leon Ruan didn't, didn't get a lot of game time. I think just about seven or eight minutes towards the end. Are you confident of um, he can come in and, and do a job if required? Yeah, I am certainly. And uh, I explained to the players after the game, given that we had two middle players um, sin-binned early in their stint, uh, when they came back on, they were fresh and, and ready to go. So it, it did interfere with the inter- interchange map. Um, I think a lot of clubs, you know, I think LKR used Yusuf Aiden for a few minutes and Stoughton didn't play a lot. And, you know, they, I think a lot of clubs sometimes um, they're the seventeenth player doesn't get a lot of game time, and I explained that to our guys that that's sometimes the way. Um, Leon's a great kid; he's training, working hard, um, and he's done a good job when he's been called upon. So he'll he'll be ready when he gets uh, when he gets more time. 
What's the situation with Kieran Hudson at the moment? He had that one comeback game for for the so the the second string side at, at Hunslet. How far off being available for the first team is he? Yeah, that was a third or fourth string side probably at Hunslet that night. Um, but <laughs> Kieran Kieran had uh, thirteen months or so uh, off the. 12, 13 months off the back of um, an Achilles injury. Um, he was behind schedule on that injury when he when he joined us in the in the preseason. So we took a cautious approach to to getting everything right there. Um, got him a little bit of game time in that Hunslet game, and then decided to use this period as um, a mini preseason for him. So he's he's going to have four or five weeks of hard training, getting ready to play uh, reserves next week against Lee. Uh, and build him up from there and and from that point we'll assess you know where he's at as far as Super League selection and or uh, getting him some opportunities in the championship.